Hey guys, in this video I want to show you how to recreate this basic destructible terrain in Godot using the Geometry class. You'll be surprised how easy it is to set up, so without further ado, let's get started. The setup for this project is pretty simple. I added a terrain, which is just a polygon 2D for the visuals, and a static body with a collision polygon 2D for the collisions. This setup is awesome to use because we can use the same data for both the polygon 2D and the collision polygon 2D, so updating the visuals and the collision will be easy. I added some enemy worms and a player, but this is not really important. The meat of the project is in the interaction between the bullet and the terrain, so let's check it out. To create destruction, we are going to use the amazing geometry class, and more particularly, the boolean operations on polygons. In our bullet scene, we define a polygon called destruction polygon. Here I used a collision polygon 2D because I also wanted to use it with an area to affect the enemies when the bomb hits something, but you could totally use a polygon 2D if you prefer, it's the same data in the end. The bullet has an area for collision detection the size of its body, once we detect a collision, we check if the the body is in the group destructible, and if it's the case, we call the function clip, passing the destruction polygon we defined earlier. So let's take a look at this function clip right now. I created and attached a script to the terrain in which I created the clip function. Let's keep the first part for now, I'll come back to it just after. As you can see, the meat of this function is simply calling geometry.clippolygons2d, passing the terrain polygon and the polygon that was given to the clip function, which is the one we defined in the bullet scene, remember? We get the result, which is an array. Because we called clip polygons, we perform the difference between polygon A and polygon B. And because we assume the bullet will never be inside the terrain, there will always be one polygon inside the result array. Quick note here, we'll see later that this might not be true all the time. We can then use the result to set the collision shape polygon and the visual polygon. Note that we are using set deferred. This is important because Godot might be doing some calculation to the static body, so we don't want to force to change the collision shape. Okay, so now you understand how to do the difference between two polygons. You can also do the union, XOR, or the intersection. But I'll talk about that in the next video, talking about all the functionalities of the Geometry class. Earlier, we skipped a part, let's get back to it. The Geometry class is making the operation on the polygon's point, but because our bullet is moving, we have to take into account its transform. When we transform the bullet, the points defining the polygons are still the same. If we don't transform, it's exactly as if we were doing the operation between this polygon at 0, 0 and the terrain's polygon. My technique for that is simple. I create a new polygon called Offset Polygon. I then loop through all the points of the original polygon and offset them using the Polygon Global Position. If you have a better solution for that, please tell me in the comments below. And with that, we have everything needed to make a destructible terrain. You can try the destructible terrain demo I'm showing you right now on itch, so check it out after this video. Obviously, we can easily go further, and that's what I'm going to talk about now. If you want to take this further, the first thing you can do is use the other operations available such as union, XOR or intersection. With that, you could add polygons to the terrain for example. If you look closely at the result we had earlier, you saw that having islands was not possible. As soon as you remove the connection between two polygons, the smaller one will disappear. This is because we kept only the first polygon of the result array. So, to make it better, you could turn the other polygon from the result array into a rigid body for example, and let them fall on the ground, or make them floating islands, as you wish. The third thing you can do if you want to bring this further is to care about performance. Right now, the terrain is a big polygon. In some cases, the calculations can be a bit intensive, causing some micro stutters. Fortunately, this can be fixed. One way to do that is to subdivide the terrain into multiple little squares that we call quadrants. Each quadrant is now a simple polygon square. This can improve the performance drastically because you don't need to make the operation on a very large and complex polygon, but only with the ones directly attached by the bomb. Full disclaimer, I didn't put in place such a system, but some clever people already did. Someone posted on the Godo subreddit a few weeks ago and you can find the code on GitHub, link in the description. As you can see from this demo, you can remove terrain on the fly without any hiccups. 
And guys, that's the end of the video. I hope you liked it and I'd love to see what you're doing with this. So please don't hesitate to share this with me. Stay tuned for the next video where I'll talk about the Geometry class in more details. It's probably the most underrated tool in Godot. You can find all the sources in the description and even try the Destructible Terrain level on itch. If you want to support me, you can wishlist Dashbong, the local multiplayer game I'm currently working on. If you want more, you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram and join the Discord. I'll see you soon and in the meantime, have a great day. Bye! Thank you.